Hello, welcome to a presentation on the importance of resilience in project leadership. My name is Donnie McNichol. Thank you, Birgitta, for your invite to the Top Scope event in Zurich on the 13th of April. Apologies, I can't make it. I'm going to be skiing with my son. Uh, Birgitta suggested that I make a short video, which you're now going to see. And judge by the fruit of a few hours between client assignments as to uh, the quality and value of it. A little bit of background, I'm a member of the Acumen 7 network, as is uh, Birgitta. I run a company called Team Animation that supports organisations, leaders, to improve the project delivery capability. There is a pack of slides to accompany this presentation which Birgitta will distribute and you will also have in the link to this presentation. Some of the materials are from a book we published at the end of last year, Project Leadership 3rd Edition, a copy of which there is a link to uh, again at the end in the pack uh, with a discount code if you're interested. So, a little bit of context about what I want to talk about. I realise the whole top scope event in Zurich is all aspects of resilience. I'm going to be talking today about one particular aspect and that's resilience in the context of the leadership of projects. It's an important topic, one we get used to one we get asked to support project leaders in and teams to develop. So it's a very important thing. We know that from organizations we work with. And project leaders have to deal with change on a daily basis. Projects themselves are change. But the projects themselves are constantly changing, ever more so than ever before. The projects themselves are constantly adapting to the challenges that the project leaders are facing. So with this change comes challenges. It impacts them personally. They're often looked at as the figurehead for the project, the weather vane if you will. So their reaction, their resilience to what happens in the project is critical. Thus the link to resilience. So let's just look at the definition of resilience. There are many, the word is used in many different ways. Um, I'll give you one definition of how we view it, which is resilience is the ability to deal with failure, big or small, and modify and adapt as circumstances demand it. With the, the leader therefore needs to have the emotional intelligence to powerfully deal with the impact of these changes and uh, that has in them as a project leader. So the change will impact them, impact them as a project leader. They've got to accept that once they get to a leadership role. We realise that this is this is a kind of outer behavioural layer that we're going to be talking about in this short presentation. There is a much deeper element to this about resilience at the carrot right at the core of the person, of their personality. I had the pleasure of delivering a session at Neural Leadership 2015 last which was very enjoyable and it got to see just the depth at which people are starting to be understood and personality starting to be understood so we realize that this is very much on the periphery or and in the external view but that's what we're talking about today so let's talk about projects there's a simple model we use when we're talking about projects just want to share with you now which is projects often live in the world of complexity. They are often complex, there's a lot of relationships, there's a level of ambiguity and so on around it. And complexity usually therefore leads to risk. Risk when they actually, the probability is zero and they, when they actually happen, the risks then turn into issues. Typically people react to the issues by changing and when change occurs you therefore typically increase the complexity in the project. Now project leaders need to deal with this in all sorts of different ways. Here there's planning. Risk, of course there is risk management. Issues, there's good governance, assurance, decision making. And for change, of course, there is change management. Now, that cycle must be broken on some project, or sometimes can into a vicious spiral where the project can end up 
in an inward spiral constantly. The risks are not, the planning is not done, the risks aren't dealt with, issues are not dealt with, change is not dealt with, and it becomes a vicious spiral and the project goes out of control. Incredibly difficult for a project leader to deal with that. Huge amount of resilience required, but you could argue that that is their own doing if they haven't managed it. The project leader, though, who is resilient, has the skills, needs to be applying these at each of the different points on the project on the cycle that they go through and the micro level and the macro level and try and implement these types of processes to make sure that there is control over the project. And even then, the project leader needs to be resilient because of the fact that there is always going to be a certain level of pressure and challenge on them. That is just a natural part of it. So you may have heard the term VUCA, uh, which hopefully you've heard correctly. Uh, VUCA stands for Volatile, Uncertain, Complex and Ambiguous. It's a term that came, uh, I believe, from the US military. And it's a term now that is being used very often in terms of project leaders because the VUCA world is the world in which they must function and be comfortable with. So this is the world that projects, that project leaders need to inhabit, need to be comfortable in and work in. So let's just talk a little bit about leadership itself. Well, the, the importance of leadership in the projects world is, is important. Last month, I had the pleasure of writing an article for the RICS, a copy which uh, you'll see here. And again, it's included in the pack and there's a link to it in SlideShare. That talked about the importance of leadership on major projects, but that's as applicable to any project. So capable project leaders are critical, as we all know, and it includes a couple of quotes, one from Professor Bent Flyberg, at, who's the chair of the major program management at Oxford Side Business School, and also from the regional managing director of, for Europe of CH2M. Um, again, just showing the importance of this subject, uh, of importance of leadership in major projects. And there's two aspects of leadership I just want to pick up on here, which the focus on um, relationships and on vision. Now, this comes from Cousy's and Posner, two very well respected leadership experts, have researched heavily and they've realised that there are two things broadly that identify good leaders. One, having the key thing, having the vision, knowing the direction and clarity about where they're going, may not do it themselves or know that vision themselves, but are clear on it and can articulate that to others. And the second is the skills to have around relationships and to take people with them and to encourage others to move in that direction. So that's kind of, for me, how I'd view leadership. So if we think about now the importance of re resilience to that role as the project leader, what can happen if the person doesn't have resilience? Well, let's just take a couple of examples. So imagine there's a conflict due to a, due to a problem on the, pro the project, possibly some failure. The project leader may react badly. This can cause relate, uh, major issues with relationships, maybe at a macro level between organisations, between teams, between project leaders their opposite number, say, in the client organisation or vice versa in the, supply, in the supply chain. That loses trust. So if trust is lost, there's a major impact. So their reaction, how resilient they are, how they cope with it professionally, it's absolutely critical. So it's very hard to recover once trust has been lost, as I'm sure you will agree. Therefore, the emotional intelligence of the leader is critical to that. Take another example. If you can't achieve the outcome or the plan, i.e. the direction, the vision needs to be adapted, then they may have to restructure and replan and create a new outcome and vision for the project. They'll need the resilience and the energy to potentially change multiple aspects of the project. They may have to fully redefine the vision and take all and the various steps to achieve it. And as the, pro as the project leader, eyes will fall on them again as the weather vane of the project. It's up to them to show that leadership potential at that point. And may, they may feel personally frustrated or vulnerable themselves because of major change, but they've got to be resilient enough and show the team um, the direction and give them an example and model the set of the positive behaviours that are required. 
So that's some examples about why resilience is important. So let's look at some of the challenges that project leaders have. Uh, let's some specifics. So one of them is working in different types of projects. Now, it's a simple model that we've used many times, which is by two researchers, Shane Har and Devere. And uh, if I just uh, sketch it out, it's called the diamond model. And what it does is it looks at four different axes and allows you to look to view projects in a very high level um, way. So, uh, so the four axes are the technology level of technology, novelty, pace, and complexity. So if you can imagine, if this is very low for each one of them and very high, and there's typically a scale of one to four, what you end up doing is getting a diamond model depending on how you might assess the project. And the last couple of clients we've worked with, they've embedded this into their project management way of working because they found it so helpful at a very high level, one page table to try and understand what is the shape of the project. So if you have a project that let's say is a four, 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 or a project that is a one, 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 the type of project leader that you need for that is very different. If you're asking a project leader to go from running projects of that nature out to projects where there's very high level of technology, huge, it's very high level of novelty, very high level of pace and complexity, the project leader would have to be incredibly resilient. So, so many, they would have to change so many things about themselves. That's not a situation, of course, that people should be put in. And slowly but surely in their careers, people are typically allowed to move out in various steps, but that doesn't always happen. So as project leaders need to work in different types of projects, that can be very challenging for them. They need to be adaptable and have the comfort to be able to say, I am not comfortable with this type of project. It is outside my comfort zone. So um, next one is looking at different type of organizational cultures. Well, one of the models, this again, this is in the, again in the book, these models are covered in the book, is around that we uh, developed for the book in particular, was to look at the level, to look at for organizations, the level of centralization versus the level of process definition. So as you can imagine, if you go from low to high, low to high, a project leader who is used to working in any one particular quadrant can find it very challenging to move between. So one of the organisations we're working with at the moment has is very much in this space here, and this is the actual model we use to talk through with the leadership team and to talk about how their project leaders are adapting. They are not being naive enough to say they want to move to there with a high level of de process definition, a high level of centralisation. But what they realise is they've got to move some way towards this here. It's complicated by the fact that they're going to be adopting an overall company centralised uh, uh, project change and delivery system, which is forcing the fact that they've got to move in this direction. But we're helping them to improve the behaviours and so on. And the project leaders are finding it challenging because they have worked in this world here for many years, but they have caused but that is challenging in its own right they're having to move up and move. So different people working, different project leaders, even in the same organisation, can find it difficult when they move. When people move between organisations, they may move, say, from an organisation here. So although there is a high level of centralization, there's a very little process definition, gives people freedom, one type of freedom. If they're asked to go and work in a project or in an organisation here, say within contractors, consultancy, in the construction world, as you move between and work with organisations that have very different cultures, that may be very challenging for the project leader. They would have to be resilient and be comfortable with the upset and frustration they may feel in working in that culture and then finding ways to adapt themselves and with the team. So that is two examples. Let me just take one more example of what this means and that's maybe the difference in national cultures. Now we worked with Cisco for around four years for a, com 
initially for a company for a few years then it was bought by Cisco and we worked from on uh, with them from Los Angeles right the way through to Seoul and we did a lot of work with them um, a lot around career frameworks and people development and project management development putting project and program codes of practice we found it very challenging or the organization found it very challenging so very broad range of national cultures which we had to find ways around and as the people were delivering projects across the globe, sometimes they were being asked to move to different national cultures, live in a country and deliver a project there, which again brought up a whole other thing, which you could spend another whole day discussing, I'm sure, in Zurich. Maybe that could be the next topic for Birgitta to talk about the challenges of national culture. We've got the same thing just recently. Just this morning, I spoke with a global PMO portfolio office manager for a major manufacturing company, they've got the same issue. And at the end of last year, we're com we uh, were delighted to help one of the high speed two te design teams, and it's a multinational team. And we're just looking at how to improve the delivery for the major, the leaders on the project because they were dealing with at least two different types of organizational culture. So how do you develop resilience? Well. That again in this, it's a topic its own right and it's covered in part four of the book which you, um, you'll be able to find. But the key thing you likely know yourself, you may well have heard the, the ratio 70-20-10. 70% of the effort or 70% of the value, the development value comes from someone doing the job and actually delivering in the role that is required of them. 20% from the type of feedback and working with others, modeling, watching other people doing it, and 10% from courses and reading. But that sounds like the 10% is of no value. That's where the learning comes, but you need often the 10% to stimulate and add the impetus to give you the 20 and the 70. So all of them are important, but the core value you get from development of um, from project res uh, leadership and part of that being leader resilience is in actually applying it and doing it in real life projects. So this is that's very much a, a, an external layer of the onion, if you will, on uh, a person. We're not talking about the core, but personality. There are all sorts of interventions in trying to help people to be more resilient as an individual in their core personality, and that's where the world of coaching high-end coaching, professional coaching coming, amongst other things that can do, uh, which we've done with working with leaders and even CEOs of organizations to try and help them uh, to do that and to build those skills and capabilities up. So to finish, let's look at the, uh, well, actually just one other thing is, I was going to mention the, um, the development program there are development programs out there, one of which we have run quite recently. And if you design the program in such a way that people have got interventions, opportunity to work with people in between, work to apply that in real projects, that is a great way of doing it. Again, it's covered in part four. So to finish, let's look at the future requirements and project leaders. And this was, the, this was covered at the end of the RICS article that I mentioned earlier. Um, the competent and experienced project leaders who can demonstrate success will become even more, or more and more sought after. That, that is an absolute given. And it identified from our research some key points that will be required in the future. And this was with Simon Pratt, um, a fellow Acum 7 member. Um, uh, who works in uh, executive search at Grosvenor, Clives and Stokes. And he's often tasked with finding those elusive major construction project leaders. Again, that's mentioned this is in the RICS article. And there was two things, just taking two of the points that we made. One was people, project leaders moving from rigorously applying standardized project program management approaches to applying a flexible and agile way to deal with an increasingly fast-moving world where customer requirements are often changing and you're almost expecting them and maybe even encouraging them to adapt the change that they're applying the project to make sure that they get the end value. Now that can be very challenging for traditional project leaders with low-level resilience who want things to be in a box and to stay that way. You can deliver the box, but may not be the one that the client actually needs. And the second thing is being permanently busy 
and never enough time to look up. So the person whose diary is constantly packed never has a chance to look beyond the end of the no their nose to our kind of reflective practitioner who's the resilience, discipline and above all emotional intelligence to continuously learn from experience and those around them and outside and possibly outside of construction itself and learn from that. So maybe one key takeaway is the demand for this project leadership and project leaders with resilience is growing and a key aspect of leadership development is a key aspect now of development in organizations, leadership development. It can be developed in people, it can be taught. It's challenging with some people, but it can be taught. And those aspects of resilience certainly can. So thank you very much for um, listening uh, to and watching the video. Uh, please refer to the slide pack, which there would be there'll be a link to. And delighted to connect with you on LinkedIn if um, if that's of interest. Okay, thank you very much.